Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Victoria 3 as Belgium! We haven't really, well, we haven't really, we haven't played in uh, Europe really, right? We've done our Canadian one, uh, we did a great Mexico run that was a lot of fun, we learned a lot of, hopefully we can apply a lot of that knowledge to a brand new run here as Belgian-y, which I'm hyped for. Of course, Belgium's a little bit of a meme on our channel. Well, I suppose it's a meme in real life as well. Um, and so it's only appropriate that we finally give this a go. Now, one of the things we are going to be doing in this run is we are going to be playing around a lot with the colonization mechanic. Of course, um, we did do that a little bit in the Americas here, uh, but it's a very different style of colonization than what we're going to do here. And obviously, um, there's, there's no good way to go about things with the colonization we're going to ignore the historical implications you know we're only going to care about numbers going up and not think about who we might be affecting with our actions boy so different from real life isn't it anyway let's take a look at our starting situation here as belgium before we get into the weeds with colonization stuff uh we have two states entirely oh let me fix my outliner here i always like to have the interest groups up i don't care to show the formations but i do want to have my states as a reference and i don't always need the interest groups up here but we can see we've got two states at the start we've got flanders to the north and wallonia to the south um and they do have some different innate cultures going on here if you take a look at the population you can see that in flanders it's overwhelmingly flemish and in wallonia Spoiler alert, overwhelmingly Wallonian. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit of a cultural differences over there. There's also differences in resources. If we take a look in the south here, we've got coal mines, iron mines, sulfur mines, lead mines, lots of logging camps. And if we take a look at Flanders and North, uh, we have no mineral resources whatsoever. We can still build some logging camps, which we know is going to be in a fairly high demand in the game. And that's about it. We start with a, a, a actually decent number of industries, to be honest, and a 44% literacy rate. And this time we're going to pay more attention to the innovation cap, which I didn't realize how many universities we needed to really take advantage of the maximum innovation cap, uh, which was one of the reasons that um, Mexico may have developed a little slowly when we were playing it. I just wickedly underestimated how much, um, how many universities we'd need. So we'll try to pay a little bit more attention to that this time. Politically speaking, there's a possibility for conflicts with the Netherlands. Also, France at some point. I did a couple of runs where I like let the first, um, I don't know, decade or so of the game go. Uh, and at some point, France, I don't know, they must have an event or a decision or something that comes up, but they get claims all over Belgium, and sometimes they want to come knocking at our doors. So as a result, we are going to need a fairly potent ally early on. And what I think is probably going to happen, I suspect we're going to join the customs union with Great Britain and see if we can finagle ourselves a defensive alliance. And then... Um, use that as a bit of a buffer early on. I feel that based on, again, based on a couple little test runs I've got going on, it feels like at some point we are going to be able to um, leave the customs union really stand up on our own. But um, I think for the first bit of the game, that is going to be really important. And it'll uh, focus a little bit more on colonization. Uh, likely we'll declare war on some of the, um, uh, what is it called? Is it centralized versus decentralized? Organized or disorganized? I don't know. Like, Sokoto is a nation we can declare war on. Fang is not. Fang is something we would colonize here. It's the difference of the solid color and the outline colors. Uh, so, yeah. Let's go through uh, our little alerts over here. The other thing we're going to do... Well, I don't know if we need to do it right away. I was going to say, we're going to want to move our interest. We do start with the declared interest in Iberia. Very quickly, we're going to want to change this uh, down here. But currently, we don't even have a colonization law. And even if we did, colonization would be quite slow early on because these provinces all have... If I zoom in... Oh, and go to the overview tab. These provinces all have at least malaria here with a 90% malice to colonization. Or if we go slightly further south, severe malaria, which is a worse penalty. And more importantly, we can't even attempt to colonize places with severe millennia, uh, millennia, malaria until we get some technology. For colonization, the big thing that we're going to look to support our colonization efforts will be quinine over here, which removes the effects of malaria and allows us to settle in states of severe malaria, although it'd still be apocalyptically slow. The severe malaria doesn't, penalty doesn't go away until we get malaria prevention, which is fairly late on. So I think for actual colonization operations, uh, we're going to be looking for quinine and regular malaria states, and the heavy-duty ones a little less so. However, 
Um, that doesn't mean we can't go and conquer things militaristically, which we're certainly going to want to do. First of all, once we've got a toehold with the colony, uh, we'll be able to attack adjacent ones fairly easily, but we could also do some naval invasions. I've heard some chatter online that this area over here is kind of nice because there you go. Coal mines, coal mines, iron mines, coal mines, iron mines. Uh, I've heard there might be some gold down here too. Oh, they're right there in, uh, Griqualand. Griqualand? Yeah gold fields so all those are going to be some fairly sexy places to grab if we can do it in the not too distant future now as much as i would love to jump directly into quinine we have to get pharmaceuticals first uh, and these are all even quinine is a tier two tech so it's not going to be that long to research i think we probably have to pay attention to one if not two techs in production first um I'm quite keen on nitroglycerin to help boost our mining early on. If I didn't have intensive agriculture, I would make that a priority. And improved uh, fertilizer is nice, although that is a tier three tech, so we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. The Bessemer process to really kick the steel industry in the butt might not be a bad idea. Some food things as well. I think I might just start with the nitro just to empower our mines. I think I like that idea a lot. Um, it does increase mortality rates, unfortunately. Once you get to dynamite, that goes back down again, but it will improve our productivity and I think that's probably a big win. So I'm going to queue up nitroglycerin first. Afterwards, we might, depending on how our laws go, we might go immediately into pharmaceuticals followed by quinine. We will see. We do start with a glass input shortage right away. We'll take a look at that in a second. Some low organization that'll be fixed soon. Yeah, glass is expensive. Um, well, glass is short. Paper is expensive. Um, so we are let's go ahead and start improving relations so we're gonna go to diplomacy we're gonna go to is it uh, oh diplomatic actions there we go improve reactions or relations we'll do great britain we'll also do france austria oh, i was gonna say spain but then we ran out so i was like you know just just some of the big neighbors around us we'll improve some relations and see what we can do um i think there's some uh, some trade we're likely to do with austria we are going to preferentially trade with great britain because that should help get us into uh good graces with them and into the customs union so that's certainly going to be priority if we can get some glass from great britain that would be lovely and there you go so only five but i think think we've got much of a shortage um do, 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 do. buy orders okay so we'll still we'll still have a like a short well not a It'll be expensive because we won't fill it in completely, but that's going to be OK. Let's, we were going to get five, right? Yeah, so that'll eliminate the problem completely. Um, we'll see about importing some paper as well. And again, as long as as long as the British market import isn't like catastrophic for some reason, we are going to preferentially import from them if we can. So we've just uh, resolved those two pricing issues immediately. That's great. Let's go and take a look at our political situation. We are a constitutional monarchy with Leopold Sachs co Coburg Gotha in charge. His interest group is Intelligentsia, which uh, Intelligence is generally something we do want to pump up a little bit. We are running a material waste over here. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world, I suppose. Um, and currently it is a liberal party that's in charge. It's intel Industrialist Intelligentsia and Landowners. For laws, the very first thing I want to try to push is colonial exploitation over here. And that is the vibe we're going to be looking for in this game. Again, we are not playing the good guys in any way whatsoever <sighs> so yeah i mean we're not we're not making any any attempts at saying oh we just you know we want to bring more people into our country we want to we want to move more of our people to these places because it's nice no we are going for exploitation over here um and it did also the only one that is support enough for us to try to push so we're at 16 percent over here uh, we will radicalize the rural folk right away which is unfortunate how potent are the rural folks? They're pretty potent. That's actually a little bit annoying. I want to try it anyway, though. Hopefully we don't immediately go into a civil war. That would be annoying. What's our last warning? Yeah, Mer Mer lawyer, Mer Royal Bleu Marines. That's fine. You just don't have a leader, which isn't the end of the world. I suppose I could get rid of the message just to say. Um, the in Hold on. The industrialists support this law change, right? Is the industrialists and the armed forces? Oh, and the tra oh, and the trade unions. Although well, they're marginalized, so they don't matter. Industrialists and armed forces. Okay. Well, um, yeah, let's let's do things to get more more influence from the armed forces. That's okay. Financially, currently, we are making positive money. Of course, we're not building anything right now, so that might be something we want to look at right away. Um, in my test, it does look like you can go ahead and boost your construction sector a little bit right off the bat, so that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Um, where are we likely to do the most construction again? Flanders in the north is more industrialized. Wallonia has more of the um, 
mining and resource infrastructure. So I kind of suspect we might be building more in Wallonia early on. I'm going to queue up a couple of construction sectors and then we're going to evaluate where we are. So you can see right away, I mean, the money goes down, but that's because we're spending on resources here. But currently things are still cheap. Iron is surprisingly cheap, although that won't last very long. Are we ready to unpause? Budget wise, you know, we have no consumption taxes at all right now. We can, for 100 authority, we can tax liquor and get a decent amount of cash, so we'll do that. Now, some of these numbers might change pretty dramatically once we unpause, but luxury furniture, I think that's a good one to pick. Um, I think it goes down a little bit. There's not as much value there. I think for now, I'm gonna throw road maintenance in to Wallonia so that we can get the construction efficiency and help build these construction sectors a wee bit faster. Um, what else? Well, why don't I bolster the industrialists? I mean, uh, sort of in the, the midterm, we're really going to want to push the intelligentsia, but in the early term, the industrialists are probably going to do much better for us. Already, our finances are going way more positive again because of the consumption taxes. I strongly suspect, I think we might be able to build a couple more construction sectors and still be pretty comfortable here. It'll depend a lot on what our resource prices go. Fabric has gone up a fair bit. Can we do a little import? Tons of fabric from the British market. That sounds good. Apparently ammunition's a little pricey. We're probably not producing our own. Um, we would have negative productivity here, but I'm going to bring that in anyway. It's not too bad. And again, we want to generate as much trade as possible. Ah, revolution going on over here. I was concerned about that. I wonder if I should have gone for another law first. I guess I didn't have to rush the colonial exploitation since I'm, I'm really going to have to wait until quinine kicks in to be useful. But we'll see. Let me bookmark these timed missions over here and see what we want to do about it. 19%. We, it'll depend a lot on luck, I would say. The glass shortage again? I mean, we weren't importing very much. That's true. Why is it ordered like this? What is this based on? Why would it not put Prussia at the top? It's the same amount. It's just a little... All right, well, we'll get some productivity from that one. Yeah, maybe I should have tried something else politically first. But if we can get it pushed, it'll be great. If we need to cancel this, well, so be it. All right, we're good there. Construction's on this way. Yeah, money still go up. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I, I want to spread them out a little bit because I, I, the first few constructions are definitely going to go into Wallonia. Because um, I think you do get some, some efficiency if the construction you're doing is in a state with the construction sectors. Raising concerns. Right. Petit bourgeoisie versus the industrialist. Um, here's the thing. If the industrialists get minus two to their opinion of me, we don't lose this. Although it would have been nice to get up to job creators, but we can probably afford to run without that for a little bit. Let's get us a little bit of a margin with the petit bourgeoisie. I think that's going to be an okay thing. I mean, it doesn't empower their ability, but that's fine. All right, Fort and Sea of Anger. Radicalize some servicemen. Chance of more of a chance of bringing down the uh, the progress. I think the expected value of both of these is the same, right? Because one time out of three, it'll do the ten percent. Two times, it'll do the five percent. I think the expected value is the same. So it's officers versus servicemen. Um, we'll just take the default. That's going to be okay. Oh, it did push back the revolution, so that's good. Uh, enactment success chance. Okay, minus three to armed forces. Well, it won't get us to the material waste uh, trait, which is good. Oh, was that, was that what we were seeing before with the... Uh... Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, no, no, we need the enactment success chance, please. Well, that's interesting. Hold on. This would actually advance us one phase. This would push us to drafting right away. But slow things down. Minus six. No, we'll take the success chance because that will carry through the entire thing. Although, I appreciate the speed boost. That is kind of nice. Keeping on the resource. Yeah, still everything is fairly balanced. Generally, with this, I feel like you see the wood and iron go up a lot. 
Well, sometimes the um, the tools, but I think we've got our own tools production here, so it's going to be okay. I suspect this isn't going to rise that quickly. I mean, at a 52, like, we certainly have, like, some unrest here, but it's not god tier. It'll mostly depend on if we get a couple of bad events or not. That'll determine if we can push this through. I kind of want to go to speed 5, but I'm worried about micromanaging this. The waffling revolutionary waffling. Oh, hello. So, I mean, this replaces a leader. But, press the general to support the government. If we do this... Oh, uh, okay. We really want... We really are hoping for the top one. Because if we get the interest group approval, we should be fine. I don't think we got it yet, because they're at minus 11. Still, so that hasn't changed. France is bankrolling us. Well, that's very nice. I'm, I don't want to owe them an obligation. An engine shortage and no one to import from. Well, we may have to make ourselves a little uh, motor industry sooner rather than later. Okay, 36%, 52, popping up a little. All right, let's go to speed five. Not going to be a lot of action here. We're mostly just waiting for some things to finish right now. Excellent. We've advanced to drafting. That's good. Um, that generates a lot more rule folk, which generally isn't going to be very good for us, I think. Uh, we can take a bureaucracy hit for five years, I think. We had a little bit to spare. Or two years, I think. Um, we had a little bit to spare, I think. Yeah. 5% for two years? Something like that. So we're okay. Rebels Doctor. Right. What are we at? 36%. So we want to take the option that reduces the Civil War progression, please. Inefficient agriculture. Uh, I don't think migration is going to do anything for us right now because we're not in a greater customs union. I'm worried about adding some more radicals right now. And I would love to get the industrialists up to the level 10 here, but we can wait. That's a second message about that. Colonial outsourcing. Okay, so option one, for five years we'll have a reduced colony growth speed. And it's going to slow down enactment time, which isn't great. But neither is the second option here. Fear of colonial outsourcing. Um, political movement support. Yeah, that's more support for no colonial affairs. I don't think we can do this. We're going to go with the alleviate, even though it's going to slow things down. Potential election shuffle here. If we were to form the government, so at 66 seems to be our best. Next possible one would be 57. It brings the armed forces into government. So it's just doing this. And then they join the Liberal Party. I mean, the armed forces do support our government reform. Um... Yeah, all right, let's do this. Clippers, engines, petition march. What do we got here? Civil war go down. Armed forces go up. King Shelburne and fast train to Brussels. Civil war goes down by a lot. Hops and Flanders become loyalists. Why don't we get... Yeah, why don't we go option three? I wonder if it's not always available. Revolution go down a little bit. Hopefully we get this through on this tick. That would do huge things for us. And look at this. Like, our money is, is basically capped. Oh, our I didn't realize our construction queue is over. Um, let's build a couple more in both of these. And there we go. Iron starting to go up. Fabric as well. So I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cycle in um, some iron mines. Now, like, you could think of these as a ratio, right? Because each one of these construction sectors uses a certain amount of, say, let's just look at iron, right? For each one of these, we're adding in... Um, another 50 iron and then you could be like well how much how much iron do we got out of each iron mine maybe we can develop a ratio but the thing is the iron mine's got its own inputs and it's a big complicated web of whatever and the, the I think the thing to do is to just build the expensive stuff well, look at all the rebellion over here um, just build whatever's expensive and especially for the construction side of it and then try to resolve that so what we're going to plan on doing is plopping down an iron mine or possibly two let's just build one for now 
Um, there is the complaint about the fabric, which for now, our only way of doing that is to build more livestock ranches. Um, and part of the question there might be how many, um, how much do we need that versus, um, versus meat? Uh, I just realized I didn't actually take a look at our buildings and what modes everything is on. Just to make sure right now, we mostly want everything on the most advanced. You know, we're not going to do luxury production there. Luxury clothes, there's just not enough demand for it, and the silk price would go up a lot. Looks like currently the luxury furniture production is a sweet spot. Of course, if we had it split between states, we could try to do a half and half. Oh, we can do a leaded glass here. Substitution zero. How come... Oh! You must be being built by some capitalists right now. Well, let's assume we're going to want the more advanced modes, and then we can see about pulling it back afterwards if we change our mind. Urban centers, gas street lights, no public trams yet. That's fine. Um, I think we're going to go to free churches here. Get some more clerks, bring down clergymen. I think politically that's the situation we want to move towards. Our wheat farms, we do have a split in terms of whether or not we do the citrus. And it looks like eliminating all the citrus work would be better for money right now. But not by much. I think I'll keep the 50-50 split. I think that's okay. And again, yeah, no transport stuff enabled quite yet. Logging camp. Again, we've got sort of a split between whether we make some hardwood or not. And it looks like right now this split is indeed the financially reasonable route. Barracks on general training, power of the purse. Universities. Oh, we'll switch you to philosophy department. We're going to go secular academia as well. Wooden passenger trains. Uh, privately owned might be fine. We'll see. Secular administration for the government, please. Okay. So I'm happy with that. What do we got? Revolution 43%, drafting 46 Okay, we didn't... Oh, we did progress to the voting stage. Okay, I think we might be all right. And we might be all right. Heavy hand in this. Increase civil war, decrease civil war. Laws of partnership, affection backlash. So for two years, our king's going to be a little less popular. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep the revolution number down. I think we're probably we're fine either way. Small arm shortage, engine shortages. Still probably know where we can import from. Oh, Prussia, a whole one. Well, let's run one in there because that might be all we need to eliminate the shortage. Small arms from Britain. Lead from Britain, even though it's unproductive. Just to get rid of the shortage because that's pretty bad. High prices are potentially tolerable, but... Oh, we're not using all of our construction input. Okay, let's check our prices. Currently, things are reasonable. Uh, we've got a slight deficit, but not much. I'm wondering if we can't maybe push this... Oh, wait, hold on. But we weren't using all our construction. That's why the price is much. Okay, let me back out of that, not do this, um, and instead just work on construction. So in terms of the material we use for our construction, prices aren't too bad. Iron should go down a little bit with this iron mine. And fabric's a little on the higher side. If I take a look at my current livestock ranches, right? So in Flanders. So meat's not that high, you see? We're already running the increased wool gathering. You can get a little more fertilizer. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, we'll put down one more to help with the fabric prices, but I think it's not going to be that profitable overall because the meat. What we might want to do is increase our tool production at this point. I think that's a good idea. And we'll plop a couple of down in Wallonia here. Keep that vertical, or not vertical integration, the uh, economy of scale. Where's that food? Oh, pause, pause, pause. Uh, this is an event for the revolutionary mo movement. Struggling people when only desperately trying to get the hands on any food they can. Dire warning of a turnip winter has been spreading through the region. Okay, increase mortality for five years. Try to increase local food production by any means. So, reduces civil war. Reduces agricultural tax income, but generates more agriculture and plantation stuff. Or can't do anything. Um, I, again, I'm not currently worried about the revolution firing, but I do want to hit this button here. 
yeah, we will reduce our agricultural tax a little bit, but if the increase goes up, I don't think it's going to hurt our economy too badly. Although, now that we're pumping, we still have plenty of um, authority available. Authority. Let's check our consumption tax situation again. Uh, could tax services. It wouldn't be the worst ratio. I could probably tank our military budget for a little while, actually. I might have built too many construction sectors. It was looking good for a while there. Oh, colonial enthusiasm. Yeah, success chance. Prestige for two years, I don't think is going to matter too much. Colony growth speed for two years. I Honestly, I'm not even sure we're going to be able to start decolonizing quite yet. I mean, we'll try. We'll, we'll plant a colony down. I just don't know how successful it's going to be until we get our quinine. So hopefully we don't get too much bad luck. There we go. That has passed. That's lovely. Let's take a look at maybe we want to pass another law at the same time. Um, we'll likely keep the monarchy for now until there's a movement. Wealth voting. We could push this up to cultural exclusion. Although the rural folk are still going to be super cranky about it. I'm okay. I'm, I, I assume the answer to this is no. But is there any chance the rural folk would like a law that I'm okay with? National Guard... Um, with the censorship. Oh, shoot. I didn't actually mean to start it started. Hold on. I want to pull this up. No. Oh, that's going to upset them. I just want to see if it was, um, cause sometimes you get something. It's like, oh, it sounds bad, but it is actually better than what we've got now. Oh, how about property women? Okay. It doesn't help us with the rural folk, but it is very manageable. The Catholic church, unless we get a weird event, isn't going to become radicalized. That's actually a great time to pass that. Wood and iron is expensive, and it's only going to become more expensive with this. That's probably what I should have uh, looked into. But let's go a pair of logging camps and another couple of iron mines over here. I'll still finish the tooling workshops because sure. Let's get that. Actually, our deficit has shrunk a little. We could consider importing some wood and iron. We're probably okay. Listen, uh, how are you doing? Oh, join Customs Union. You're fine with this, huh? Yeah, let's do this immediately. So that's going to radically change our um, our situation here. Okay, wood prices have normalized, and we're still building one logging camp, which is fine. But iron, I, just, I think, but I think based on, especially when we're looking at Canada and stuff, I'm pretty sure that the iron prices in the British Customs Unit are going to stay high for a long time. And even when we think about when we split away from Britain, I don't think we're going to complain about having more iron mines. I'm pretty sure we're kind of going to want as many as we can have. So right now the plan is to, um, let's going to queue up. Let's queue up three more because I'm sure we're going to support at least that much. And then we'll evaluate the prices. Knackman success chance. It is going to make the Catholic Church a little more cranky. They're still, ooh, that is going to bring them to minus 10. Okay, as much as I'd like the plus 20%, I don't want to start another revolution brewing already, so we'll say we're not going to celebrate too loudly. Still brings us up to 52%, but with a man manageable state in our country. If we can bring down the iron prices a little bit, then what we'll be looking for is... Um, okay, we can't defend the pack. Um, is probably building up our, our arts and our universities. What's the uh, private industry doing? Steel mill, all right. Hysterical claim. Ah... Uh, Okay, so this will give us a setback, but the 10% chance, I mean, it's dramatically bringing up our chance of success. And you got to remember that sort of the higher this number is, the more difference each percentage does. Well, I mean, in a sense, 1%, you know, for every time it rolls, it just adds an extra one out of 100 chance to improve. But you got to think about it. Let's say we were sitting at 10% chance and we added 5%. So going from 10 to 15, um, most of the time, like, well, most of the time is still going to fail. What's the right way to think about this? It's, you got to think of it in terms of bringing our chance of failure from 90% to 85%, which doesn't necessarily feel like that much of a change. It's close to about a 5% change. Whereas if we're sitting at 90% chance of success and we get another plus 5%, right? Bring us to 95. We're bringing our chance of failure from 10% down to 5%. We're having the chance of failure or doubling the chance of success is one way you can think about this. It, the, those, those sorts of things can get a little muddy. 
Um, I don't like the idea of increasing our success chance, so we're going to take option B here, which is going to make more radicalization. But right now our loyalists are way ahead, which is nice. Gold discovered in Tasmania. See, we got to get... Okay, right. Hold on. Colonization is something that's now here. We're going to remove our interest in Iberia. And where are we going to start? I mean, obviously we know about Belgian Congo, but a lot of this is very... Um, it's the hardcore malaria. We can go and start colonizing right here in Douala. Right, uh, this has got the regular level of malaria, which is still going to be brutal right now, but we actually can't even colonize down here. We could start there, spread the colonization inwards, um, consider declaring some war against Benin, things like that. I'm wondering about just dropping some colonies over here. I think I kind of like that idea. I think we might focus on what about maybe we do Niger. Sort of split the difference. We'll declare interest there, and we gotta wait for that to actually kick in. I wonder if we can get ourselves involved in some uh, valuable trade, right? And just make some money out of it. Trade uh, revenue per employee. Well, yeah, we'll just go for high, high value stuff and things that are expensive. And now we can't trade with Britain because we're in the British market. Did I ever do groceries? I might have. Might have clicked on that right away. But we're not experiencing any good shortages right now. Okay, there we go. Interest have flipped, so now we can establish a colony. Now, I'm just going to start one up. We get uh, no mouse over on things, huh? Maybe I'll... Start with Togo. I don't think it really matters where we go. I'm trying to think of like, you know, neighbors where we might want to invade. Uh, uh, this has got the bonus infrastructure from the Niger Delta. Sure, sounds great to me. Now you can start more than one, but it splits your colonization effort. So I'm just going to put a toehold in one place. And then if we unpause, we sh probably, I was going to say, we'll get the isolated thing. So we're just going to alt click and put a port right at the top and yeah, let that go. And then, yeah, money wise, it might've gone a little too heavy on the construction sectors, but on the other hand, maybe going fast is a good idea. Belgian woman's travels. Great boon. Excellent. Writings encourage suffrage movement plus 10% or do a publisher, which could backfire on us. I'd rather not take the risk. We'll take this. Smooth 73%. It's very good. Yeah, so you can see here our colonization time, right, is ludicrous. But that's going to change. So we're about to finish our, um, I was going to say dynamite, but it's nitroglycerin. There it is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip over and we're going to pick up uh, pharmaceuticals for the quinine. Oh, I just remembered. We can bump this up and bump this up. Is it per level 34? If I bump up the education, that will send us into negative bureaucracy. We'll still be positive when this kicks in. Um, we will probably have to plan another government office so we can run that. Which isn't going to do great things for our economy right now. Groceries, engines. We could probably get into the motor industry real quick. Let's build one in uh, in Flanders. Actually, I know we have our industry over here in Flanders, but really we should have all of our steel mills in Wallonia. Okay, and we do have some. Okay, yeah, I'll put a motor industry in there as well, and that'll be perfect. Anyway, I think that should bring us to the end of today's episode. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you're excited for this new series. I really am. I'm hoping we can do some great and wonderful and, all right, probably downright evil and sketchy things here as Belgium. Uh, hopefully we can win the game and that's all that matters question mark i'll see you next time bye, -bye.